<laughs> yeah, I do have a good time, everybody. I'm not complaining. I'm inside the Roaster Shop booth. You guys would have remembered Jeremy when we had our interview with him, one of the co-owners of Roaster Shop Chassis. And I'm here to check out their rig. That's right. I do love the big trucks. We checked out um, Bradley Graves, awesome, beautiful red setup. But today I want to have a look. You know, we, I mean, I do like seeing all the classics and stuff, but I do love big trucks. How could I not stop here? Check this out. Now this is pretty sick. It looks good. It is absolutely massive. I want to know how they store so many cars and trucks because these guys do build them, of course. There is a shop at the restoration shop, at the roaster shop, but they store all of these chassis. So, and these things are big. Check it out. All of these go inside that massive trailer. And we're going to find out exactly how they get stored and how do they fit all of this in as well as finished cars. So that's what's going to be happening right now. Curiosity has led me right here to check out that awesome massive big truck. I don't know exactly what it is. I know it's a Peterbilt, but we're going to find out some more details in just a moment. All right, everybody. So I'm here with Brian. Come over here, Brian. How's it going? Good, 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 good. This is what holds all those beautiful chassis. Yep. What is this? What are, what are we looking at right now? So this is a 2022 uh, 389 Peterbilt long nose. So it's a, a 605 horsepower X15 Cummins motor, flat top sleeper, all the sexy stuff on it. It looks good. Can I just put it out there? Thank you. I'm absolutely loving it. I love the fact that it is so big and long. Check this out. You know, I was telling some of your colleagues that I think this is the biggest trailer here. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a 56 foot long trailer. Most, most trailers are 53 foot. So it's a little longer to a 295 inch wheelbase on the tractor. So it's got a nice respectable stretch. Wow. I'm loving the whole front end and there is so many crazy I am going to say rat rod ideas going through my mind <laughs> on the stuff that you can do and be creative with the Peterbilt, but that's not what we're talking about. Today we're going to have a look at just how cool this is, and as well as that we're going to look inside the trailer to see how these chassis get stored. Yep. So first of all, my curiosity leads me to this. What is this? These are the air cleaners. That's the air cleaner. Yeah, okay. so because there's no real way to get air like a, like a normal car, uh, since the radiators on these things are so massive. So all uh, the air cleaners are on the outside of the, tra of the tractor. And that's the entire radiator right here. Yeah, yeah, so you can see it's pretty big. Well, this is how people will know exactly how big it is. That's how big this truck is, okay? <laughs> it is a Peterbilt, of course, and they were made like this, but this is pretty cool. So the bumper flips up. When I get close to curbs, I can show that. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> very convenient. That yeah. just detects it when you're getting very close to well, the Well, I have to lean over and hit a switch, but yeah. yeah, if I'm getting, if I feel like I'm getting close to a curb or something, it saves me from damaging the bumper since the truck sits so low. Well, the bumper is part of the look, isn't it? It is, yeah. And not only that, let's have a look inside here. Now, Brian, how many days do you think that you are on the road before we have a look at your living quarters for most so, of the time? I, fortunately, I don't have to sleep in the truck very often. Um, they, they take pretty good care of me here at the roadster shop, put me in a hotel and stuff. So, But I will sleep in there if I have to. Sometimes you just drive till you really can't drive anymore. And if there's nowhere to stay, it's it's uh, it's in the sleeper, you know. So, But uh, on average, I'm about 100 days on the road a okay. year, which isn't when you compare it to other truck drivers, like the on the road truck drivers, those guys are gone all the time. So, yeah. but I do other things here for the roaster shop as well. So they, uh, they keep me pretty busy. I do have a lot of respect for the truck drivers out there, especially here on the American roads. There is a lot and you guys, I mean, I see them all the time. So 
do everyone a favor and move out of the way. <laughs> yeah, be safe out there, people. Be Just safe. remember these things can't stop on a dime, so exactly. don't pull in front of trucks and always make sure you, you're not in their blind spots. You know? Exactly, so. absolutely. Very good points, right? How long have you been a driver? A uh, driver? So 25 years. Okay. Yep. Very experienced. Is this the biggest hole you have had? The, so I've driven large trucks, but this is the longest trailer that I've ever pulled and certainly the nicest truck that I've ever driven. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm guessing, uh, I'm not a truck driver, but I'm guessing there's a big difference between driving a truck and driving a truck that is then towing a trailer. Filled with millions of dollars of cars and chassis and stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty important job to yeah. be able to you know to do both and not yes. just jump in and hammer down you know so and you've got that all on your shoulders well yeah. <laughs> let's see how comfortable you are yeah come on up okay i don't know i think anybody who likes trucks would love these big massive peter bells first of all uh, Brian has just aired out the seat, so I'm super low, which is why my view is just going to be of the dashboard. But check it out, a lot of gauges. What's happening here? What is something that you can tell us? I know there is a lot going on. There's a lot going on. So, I mean, the big thing is just just keeping an eye. I mean, all of these things are like your dummy lights on a, on a regular car, except mm -hmm. they're all there. So you just can keep an eye on things, oil temperatures and stuff like that. And This here is different. This is the addition. Yeah, so the, the the biggest difference between a semi truck and a regular car, of course, is your brakes are hydraulic on a car. Well, on a tractor trailer, semi truck, they're going to be air brakes. So there's no way to put this thing in park except for to to set your brakes. And you have to uh, use both of those knobs. Yeah, so one is for the tractor and one is for the trailer, um, and I engage both when I stop. And that's an emergency, uh, kind of like the emergency brake. It's like an have. emergency brake, right? But it's it's a sp it's a spring-loaded brake that applies pressure. So now, in this truck, being as modern as it is, fortunately, this tractor is actually uh, uh, equipped with full disc brakes all the way around. Mm -hmm. So that makes a huge difference for uh, stopping and heat and the brakes and everything like this. Okay. So, another interesting thing that you don't see in a regular car. So even if you're familiar with manual cars, five-speed, six-speed. So this is an 18 speed. 18 speed. Yeah, so it's a little different on how it shifts. Uh, it's a little different on how you shift it. Um, you shift these trucks with you, more like um, uh, with your the RPMs in mind instead of just shifting when you feel like shifting. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't use my clutch uh, except for to start out, so you don't have to engage your clutch, clutch every time. You, it's called double clutching, okay. uh, but you're not actually using your clutch. So you're, again, you're using your RPMs on your engine to make and you sure you can still shift the gears without the clutch. That's right. Yep. And is that because this is a modern truck? No, is that no, they, that's just how they've kind of always been, you know. So it's just how they they you've been able to do it. Some guys still use the clutch; they, they double clutch using their actual foot, but. Uh, that's a lot of work, so. Especially when these are designed to be on the road for so many hours. Yeah, yeah. About 18 speeds. Yeah, 18 speeds. What speed. do you use 18 speed for then? <laughs> because, yeah, so um, they're real small gears because it's all about pulling. So the gears are really low and until you start getting into your high sides gears and then they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, you start climbing mountains and that little bit of, uh, of speed you lose means you have to shift well sometimes that there's there's it's too slow for one gear and uh -huh. too fast for the other so you have basically what are like almost like middle gears oh, wow so you can change the each one each gear has a high and a low and then there's a high and a low side so wow very complicated in eh, especially it's really to not me, but yeah to me. <laughs> Okay, and now you've got, so this is the gauges for the trailers, uh, air and pressure. Yeah, the tractor and trailer, um, you know, of course we have oil pressure or oil temperature, so behind my phone thing, so, but uh, it just kind of lets you know what the truck's doing. And the main thing is, you know, keeping an eye on your air pressures too. If you ever have an air leak, the, the, the brakes will engage. 
all by themselves. It's a safety thing. So if you lose an air pressure, you really kind of have to get off the road fast. And But on, again, on something like this, it's not really something you worry about. But older equipment, mm -hmm. that can be a problem. Okay, well, this is the radio. Who can we talk to on the radio? I don't is, know. Is, is, is there anybody. some secret code with all tra tra uh, truckers talking yeah, to each other? Yeah, you know, it's like you see on the movies, <laughs> Breaker 1-9. <laughs> You know, so can you communicate with other truckers? I, it, you can ask if anybody's out there. So, Breaker One Nine for radio check. Yeah, we're kind of far from the expressway, so. Well, I'm not surprised because I had phone reception was having trouble here. So. Yeah. Okay, but that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, in case you do get stuck somewhere, and you can always it's call good, out. Yeah, old school truckers still use these things. A lot of the modern guys, they don't really care about them. But uh, the old school truckers, you know, they call them large car drivers and stuff like that. So they, we still t communicate with each other. You're in a traffic jam or something. You want to know if there's a lane closed. So you try to find out if, what lane's closed so you can prepare yourself. You're not trying to fight over at the last minute, you know. And then that's why you are closer with, um, when you're closer with the other trucks, then you can all communicate. Yeah, some of these guys have some, pr they have like basically hot rotted CVs where they can talk pretty far. It's almost like a ham radio, you know, well, I mean, they can go miles down the road and mine, I, I really haven't done much to it yet. So, but uh, yeah, okay. you can get those things kind of tuned up the same way you do like a, a car. But that's pretty cool. Now. We've got a bit of a window for light and then if you get really tired you can always take a nap how common is it to have beds in the trucks um every over the road truck that you see on the road on the road will have a sleeper of some sort um because trucking companies big trucking companies aren't going to pay their pay the hotels that it would cost to put their drivers up so they have to be able to sleep somewhere yeah but this is pretty nice i mean if you ask me I mean, yeah it's heated and in air condition and, and, yeah. this is pretty comfortable now let's see how comfortable those chassis are all right and the inside of yeah. the trailers everybody oh yeah super cool all right, where should we should we go around to the back? Yeah, we can go around to the back, or if you want to go through this way through the booth, or let's do that. That way, that way we can have a look at the chassis and the size of them, so you get an understanding of how much room there actually is. Now we are here at the Tri Five Nationals, so there will there are videos from the show as well as interviews. But right here, we're just focusing on the Peterbilt, so I hope you are enjoying it as much as I am. I'm always curious on how these things get towed around. Now, you guys have got setup that happens at some shows. Every show we have, a. this is our setup. So, um, so any big shows that we do, we don't do anything smaller as far as like a smaller pop-up type, type set. So any shows we do, this is what we bring out and this is pretty much what you can expect to see. Uh, sometimes the displays will change as far as the chassis display or the mm -hmm. chassis will change. But the chassis displays that we have, they kind of live on the truck and, and that's what we bring. Um, and it's a pretty big display, can we just say that? It is, yeah. So it's, the, the awning's substantially larger than a lot of guys. Uh, it's 25 foot and of course it goes the entire length of the trailer so 25 foot out and then 56 foot deep. And this is connected to the truck as well? Yep, this is the this is the whole unit. Yeah, so truck and trailer. Okay. All right, so show us how do we put some of the chassis in here? Uh, yeah, so All right, you got. What have you got there? So this is the controls for the for the lift gate. Okay. So the entire back gate is one piece. So on a standard, you know, load in or or load out, or anytime we're putting anything in here, of course we got to put it through the back door. We don't have anything big enough on the side, so. Okay. 
So you can see it's a pretty big, heavy door. It's, it's got massive. two huge uh, hydraulic uh, pistons that lift. Um, and then it has uh, um, a uh, mechanical style screw that actually brings the door up and down. So we can lift a car or even, a, we've even had trucks on this, you know, wow. pretty big trucks. We can actually lift that up and that, that second story up there is an adjustable floor. So depending on the height of the vehicle, that can go up that or down. Can go up and down, and then of course this will come up to meet whatever side we it want. Acts, it then acts as a lift. That's right. Oh, that's pretty cool. So wow. So yeah, so we would open this, and then of course this slides out, you know, and then it opens the 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 ramp comes out. So we can get it pretty low. So Roadster Shop builds some pretty insanely low cars, so it's pretty important to have a gate or a lift gate or door that you can get the car on it you want to go for a ride i do brian okay i want to stand here and let's lift this thing up All so right. one, we can see the upper level and two i want to go for a ride <laughs> but check out the inside here wow so and there's glass doors in the middle yeah so the the, the glass door kind of partitions because the, the front area I'll show you later has ac units so we try to keep that cold air in the front mm -hmm. plus i kind of this is where i hide a lot of the stuff we use for for setup and tear down storage boxes and blankets and ladders and kind of keeps everything out of the out of the view of and the stuff this is the stuff that goes in somebody's pickup when you have got a car in here uh so yeah i mean if well so once everything's all put away, a lot of this doesn't live here, so it's kind of tucked up in the in the gooseneck. Okay. So there's still room to put a display here or a car, mm -hmm. um, and nothing's really in the way or flying around. It's all got it. It's all got its own little compartment to go in, and you know that that way you keep things safe and from from becoming damaged. How many cars do you think you can haul around in So this? we could do five long cars. Five long yeah, cars. Three on top and two on the bottom. So wow. say you're like. Your Impalas, which are big long cars, mm -hmm. or Cadillacs and things like that, um, pickup trucks that are long. Um, and that's why they designed this trailer. This trailer was built by T&E out of Hersher, Illinois. They do beautiful work. Uh, they do a lot of stuff for NHRA and everything like that, and that's why we use them. Um, but uh, yeah, we had them, we had them build the, the trailer this specific way because we didn't want to have to run into a situation where we weren't able to fit a vehicle in because of length. Mm -hmm. So now height's different because trucks can get tall. And that's why we have the adjustable upper decks. Awesome. Let's go up, Ryan. Going up. Let's go up. You never know what's going to fascinate me, but always be sure that when there's a big, massive rigs like this, I'm always drawn. Wow, now we can really tell the length of the yeah. truck just by this yeah. head. Check this out, everybody. Yeah, that. Now I can see when you said three cars at the top, two at the bottom, it makes sense now. So right now we have the two, there's a center deck and then the rear deck uh, lift. We have both of them all the way up uh, for, for clearance for our heads when you're walking around downstairs. But generally these two would go down a little farther so they match up with the very front okay. uh, area. So you could drive a vehicle from all the way back here straight across. Wow, this is so convenient. Isn't it convenient? I mean, this is very convenient. Oh, man, this is a game changer for us. Yeah, I mean, this is what, exactly what Roadster Shop needed. Being as big as we are and, and as busy as we are and, uh, you know, all of the things that we do and stuff. So it was, it's, it's a perfect vehicle for the, for the shop. It's not just perfect, it's super cool. Yeah. No wonder you're happy. No wonder yeah, you like oh, driving man, I'm this. so blessed to be able to do what we do. <laughs> I bet you're the cool kid in the oh parking lot of all the other truckers, yeah, right? Get a, lot of, get a lot of thumbs up and a lot of photographs. Yep. And people, yeah. So they come up to you and be like, hey, can we see it so Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is super cool. But I do want to go inside here and have a look at the glass doors of the glass partition. Okay. Right there in the center. And see what else is happening. But 
super cool and it's fully air conditioned as well. You want to go this way? Okay, I'll follow you. Look at all these lights. So the, it's kind of lived in right now, so apologize for the, but this is kind of where we store all of our, all the things that we use to, to put the tent together, to put the awning up and. And this is all the tie downs that then get connected the, to these yeah, things. Yep. Yeah, so these, I, I try to keep my tie downs up there so that I don't have to keep remembering exactly how we did everything. And it, so it always goes back the same way. So, um, so those tie downs stay up there. And then of course we have all this other, you know, tie downs and... And I know these from seeing some of the other trailers that they, the cars get hooked onto the... Yeah, so they, so they have basically what are these rings and uh, they snap right in and they're super strong. So, and then once they're in there, you can kind of strap down what you need to strap or if you, that being, being the track that's pretty much the entire length of the trailer, you have all these different ways you can tie stuff down and in case you have different cars or different displays. And, and with the chassis, most of the chassis that I've noticed over at the Roadster shop that you take out to the shows, they all have got the tires and wheels on them. Yeah. So yep. it does make things a little bit easier. Yeah, they roll in and out pretty easy. And what do you use to move them? The do chassis? You, yeah. Uh, uh, just doing? manpower. Manpower, okay. Yep. All right, Brian, talk to me. There's a lot of storage happening here. I feel like I'm almost in a kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, so that was another big thing for us that we wanted to be able to do because we do SEMA um, and, uh, you know, we, when we go out west and we know we're going to be away from the shop for a while, we want to make sure we have everything that we have, ha what we need. We don't want to have to ship anything if something's forgot. So we have a lot of compartments where we can store things, um, things that will permanently stay on the truck. And, uh, and it, it's just a big help for us not to have things laying anywhere while the truck's moving down the road everything has its spot where it's supposed to be and and uh so there's it's pretty regimented and a pretty routine how we do it the same way every time that way nothing gets damaged or lost okay so there's a lot of tools in here as well i'm guessing yeah just you know basic tools nothing like a you know uh like a full setup but we got a you know the basic tools socket sets and things like that um we carry impacts on here because being a chassis manufacturer, of course, you do sometimes have to throw on different tires if, if the customer. Well, you know, everybody's seeing this at home. All I'm thinking about is anytime you have a trouble, just come over to the roaster shop booth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Find the tool you're looking for. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. We. It, well, that. no, we. Of course, you know, it's funny. This is just basically a big traveling family. What we do, we're very blessed to be able to do this as work in this industry and. You know, I've known a lot of these drivers and I've been in this industry for about 15 years and all of the drivers that drive a lot of these other trucks, we see each other week in and week out. So we're always trying to help each other. And, you know, if you see somebody broke down inside the road, you don't drive past them, you pull over and make sure they're OK and stuff like that. So we, we love that. Love and, that mentality and yeah. attitude right there because it is evident and I have seen it happen. Yeah, absolutely. But this is super cool. A lot more compartments. So how long does it take for you to do the setup? So on average, uh, it's about a two and a half to three hour setup. And that's with setting the awning up, uh, getting all the chassis and chassis displays where they're gonna be. Cause sometimes we do change out our, our, our chassis. So things fit differently. We want them always to look nice and presentable. Uh, things be proportionate. Um, and uh, so the big thing though is the cleaning, you know, so the truck itself, um, it takes me, so I'll get into the, I'll get into the, to the venue a day early if I can, and it'll take me an entire day by myself just to clean the truck. Then when because the this does not look like it's been driven for so many hours. Yeah, everything is shiny. It's still pretty new <laughs> truck, but yeah, it gets dirty fast. So, um, so you've got to clean it up as soon as you arrive. To yeah, the I'll wash the truck, hand wash it, and then of course if I need to do any polishing or anything, and, and take care of that stuff, and then. Uh, because I, I don't want the I don't want the sales guys to have to worry about that part of it. Because yeah. technically that's my job, you know. So, and they do so much anyways, you know. So. Well, I'm glad you did because otherwise, how would I have been drawn over here? You know, I'm like, yeah. oh, this shiny big white truck. Yeah, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it pretty awesome. eye-catching. Absolutely. 
two, three hours to set up and it's packing up a lot quicker. Usually it's a little faster, um, you know, because the, the, the part, the long part about the setting up, of course, like I said, you're you're placing everything exactly where you want it and the wipe down and the cleaning of the chassis and all the displays and stuff like that. Where at the end of the show, you know, you we can just start putting things right where they go and where they ride down the yeah, road. Because it's only going back to the shop when you can fix things up That's there. That's right, yep. So that then we, sense. you know, we disassemble the awning first and get that down and uh, put, it all has its own little, uh, you can kind of see them up there, the racks. So all the awning oh, yeah. goes up there and has its spot. And uh, we can take this thing, the awning down comes comes down pretty fast. And then the rest of it's just kind of situating things, getting everything back in its place, making sure nothing's moving, strapped down properly. And so it goes pretty quick, maybe hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, depending on what chassis we have with us. Sometimes we'll have to stack chassis, like in this yeah. case. You can see there's five chassis out there, but there's only three spots because I have the two displays that live here on the bottom floor. That was awesome, everybody. Brian here from the Royster shop. We're not done with the Royster shop. There is going to be, hopefully soon, a full shop tour to show you exactly what happens inside the shop. We've had a chat with one of the owners previously on the channel. We have seen the chassis. Now we've seen the rig and met a very important person because without you, none of these will come to the show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we can't see it. So the next step is definitely to have a look at the shop and get a bit more background onto how everything got started but Brian thank you so much you're so welcome appreciate, appreciate it, it.